Ben from the Artful Family is back and we have ourselves an Ender 3 3D printer. Now, I picked this up about two months ago and this is my first ever 3D printer ever trying to, to do this. So I'm fairly green when it comes to 3D printing and uh, it was just an uphill paddle to make sure that, uh, to get good prints. All the videos I found online were great for specific items that I was looking for, but nothing gave kind of a broad view as to what to do as a newbie, like what things can go wrong. So I came up with a list of 10 things with the Ender 3, with 3D printing that you should be mindful of before your first print. Bolts, number one. That's the first thing you check is make sure that the parts that you've built are snug, but also the parts you did not build uh, are snug as well. So my Y axis here, uh, the bolts holding it to the frame were loose, as well as the eccentric bolt for the bed, as well as the nozzle here were loose. So basically I was able to wobble the bed a little bit more than I should have. And I was able to see a gap between the wheel and the actual uh, extruded frame. So you take your little wrench here and then you adjust snugly. Not too tight, but just snug. So number one, bolts and eccentric screws. Check them all. Number two, clean up your wires. Uh, you will prevent some um, failed prints very easily just by cleaning up your wires. Let me show you a few reasons why. First thing is uh, you've got the uh, cable here that runs to your screen. Uh, there are easily printed uh, clips there to protect it. The cable here was flying free and got caught on the bolt right here and would have failed to print. So cleaning up the wire here would prevent possible, um, yeah, possible issues. Now let's look around the back. You've got the clip here. I'm gonna put a link of all the things I think would be first thing for you to print from your printer to help prevent any issues in the future. One of them is this clip right here. It attaches to your stepper motor and it kind of helps keep these cables out of the way. Uh, one thing I found uh, during my printing is that, uh, especially this big cable here, sometimes can make its way back and prevent the table from going backwards to the uh, stop, Z stop, um, the stopper here. So again, you could cause a failed print while you're away. So clean these cables up, put them away so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, plate there. And that's about it for cleaning up your cables. The back part and this one here are the ones that I've seen cause issues for sure. And then nice here is never a bad thing as well. Number three is check your E-steps. Now, the two printers I've worked with, the two Ender 3s were incorrect. So when you tell, or when the machine is told to extrude a certain amount of filament for whatever it's like for the process it's doing, it was doing about 10% less than it should. And it was causing failed prints. Uh, this right here, this clip right here is probably a perfect example. I could take it apart. You could, you see that? These are one of my first prints and because it was extruding about 10% less than it should. So uh, I, will, I won't tell you exactly how to do it. There's some great videos out there. Teaching Tech has been uh, super help, helpful uh, with his videos on uh, doing a few of these things. So have a look at the description and it'll show you how to ensure that you're extruding the right amount of filament uh, from your machine. Number five, print slow. All right, some of the default uh, print settings are just super fast, like, choo, 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 choo. super fast. And you know what? Hey, let's have some good prints first. You can improve on speed at a later time. Like I do about 20 millisec uh, millimeters per second on my, my first layer. After that, I print about 50. Hey, you could do that later. You could go faster later, but just get some good prints off. Man, oh, I wish, I wish I would have known one, two, three, four, and this one. I can't wait to tell you about number six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But print slow, just try that. And hey, you know what? This is for a newbie, this isn't for experienced guys. So once you're in there a few months, hey, do whatever you want. Just start slow and you won't regret it because you can always go faster. Once you're printing fast, you're like, print slow? 
Number six, a clean space. You know, getting yourself a clean space is never a bad thing. Uh, like, okay, so one of the prints that I recommend, but it's not mandatory, is a cover for your fan. Uh, just because uh, at the beginning I didn't really understand it, but now that I print a lot more, just a lot of little tidbits and bobs can get into your fan and just cause annoyances and unnecessary issues. So, uh, but keep, and specifically what I talk about is uh, your tabletop. Now, you see I'm touching it now, so any oils from my hands are going onto here and may cause adhesion issues, bed adhesion issues. So let's avoid that. What I do is I take 99% isopropyl alcohol on my uh, Ender 3 thing, just pour it a little bit on a lint-free cloth, not on, um, not on paper towel. There you go. You got yourself a cleaner surface. Clean your top after every few prints and uh, it's just one less thing that can go wrong. What I'm really trying to promote here for the new people is just try to be consistent, try to minimize the variables of things that can go wrong. And a clean space is just one of those things that can cause you issues. So let's just avoid that problem and move along. Number seven, bed leveling. Okay, so bed leveling. One thing that's recommended, and uh, again, you know what, I'm just saying it, this is mainly for newbies here, is that uh, make sure your bed is warm. So uh, there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to do bed leveling. So I'm gonna leave that to those people. Like Teaching Tech, he does such a great job that I'll leave him to show you how to do it. This is my list for newbies here. And bed leveling, make sure that your bed is at temp. So 60 degrees in your nozzle, 200 degrees. I just do it all. What happens is with the uh, change uh, with metal, you know, it, it changes dimension a little bit. With heat, it um, expands a little bit. So things might be a little different between zero degrees and 65 degrees. So let's bring everything to temp and then you level there. Now, this is the thing for newbies. Level every few times. Every like five prints or something. I don't know. The only reason why I'm saying that, a lot of people say, hey, set it and forget it. Sure, if you know what you're doing. As a newbie, just do it every once in a while. Get familiar with your printer and understand that where you're at. Um, so don't don't listen to those people that say, oh, you don't have to do it. Just do it. Just try. Just 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 learn your printer, and you you can you can you don't have to do it once you you become better at it. But at the beginning, just get familiar with it, learn it, and um, there you go. Number eight, must prints for your printer. Now, hey, I watch tons of videos of totally, total, tons of things you can do to make this printer awesome. Like you can see on my printer, I've upgraded to the Hero Me mount uh, with the two 515 fans. And uh, I've got myself a tensioner here. I've got the other tensioner I'm gonna install later. I got the Raspberry Pi. You know what, you don't need that. Don't need it, okay, don't stress. That's not what's necessary. Um, I'll put a list of what I feel is the necessary prints, and let's talk a little bit about them. First one is this little clip up here. It's the one where you could remove and, and replace the uh, filament. It's got a little, um, little hole there. I find that feature just that much better. Filament cleaner here. I got some lint-free cloth in there that I wrap the filament with, and this easily comes off, and again, you can take it on and off the filament fairly easily. So um, again, it's all about minimizing variables and uh, having a clean filament, again, is uh, a big thing to uh, maintaining and having good uh, prints. Also, the clip in the back that I showed you earlier, just to hold these cables away from the bed, and then these clips down there, as well as this little handle here, I find extremely useful for your filament. Um, I can just move my filament back and forth. And what I like to do is even though you do a, a brim or you get kind of the first layer before you start, or the first kind of uh, extrusion before you start your print, I like to, before I start my printing, just to push some filament through uh, when the nozzle's hot and just before I press the print button. Why? Because I just know it's primed and uh, again, I'm still new and I just want to prevent 
the least amount of variables of things that can cause issues. Number nine, stay simple. What do you mean by stay simple? Okay, so you got yourself 3D printer, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make this, 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 and that. And I'm gonna use this kind of filament, this kind of filament, this kind of filament. Okay, stop, slow. Hey, this is your first print. Stick to a brand, uh, stick to a type. You know what, You'll, you could buy stuff later. You know what, your first roll, just keep it simple. Now go for a well-rounded, uh, good brand name, something, it might be a little bit more expensive, but hey, this is your first time. Let's minimize the variables. And for me, I've stuck to the Hatchbox PLA, and that's all I've used. I've used Hatchbox PLA just because I am starting to get familiar with this. Um, I'm at that point right now where I will experiment. I ordered a different brand of PLA, and we'll see how that goes. So uh, stay simple, and with your PLA, again, minimize the variables and put your filament in um, a container with desiccant because it absorbs moisture and can cause issues with your prints. Again, it's all about the variables, minimize them. Keep the moisture away from the filament when you're not using it. So if I am not gonna use my printer for two, three days, I'm putting it in my box. Got the box right here. It's got filament, it's got desiccant, and uh, it's protected from moisture. All right, protect your filament from moisture when you can. Number 10, and the final, mark your tubing. What does that mean, mark your tubing? All right, I won't, able to, I won't be able to show you uh, a close-up, but I've had to take apart my, um, my nozzle here, clean things out, because sometimes you hear that nozzle collects uh, inside because the tubing here pops up a little bit or it's not flush to the base of the nozzle. You can do some research about that, but what I'm talking about is a trick. So for example, if you're gonna, your nozzle here, um, if you're gonna tighten it or loosen it or do any work on it, you gotta make sure it's at temperature because there's probably gonna be some filament there that's holding it uh, together like glue when it's uh, cold. So you gotta heat it up at 200 degrees where the filament will be melting. So keep that in mind. And uh, what I do is I have myself a little small marker here and I mark the edge of the tubing here once I'm comfortable it's at the proper distance, as well as I mark it there at the bottom. So I have a point of reference every time I print. So I know if my tubing has come out or uh, has moved or is still in the same position I last left it. Extremely important, again, will leave you with um, uh, less issues if you can see the problem before it happens or before it causes more problem. And then you can tighten your, your nozzle a little bit um, when it's hot. Don't have to do it ever really, uh, but just again, with checking your bolts, it's never a bad thing to just do it. Oh, there you go, it's perfect. Um, I did upgrade my um, uh, this here, uh, just because uh, I don't like the one that comes in with the box. It doesn't have like um, metal uh, teeth in it but I did not change the one on my nozzle and it has not been causing me problems. So again, uh, it's all up to you. And those are things that you can do along the way, but if you could just monitor it and make sure that uh, it doesn't move on both ends when you're printing, you're golden. And that's, uh, that's about it. Those 10 things, I may have forgotten something, but that gives you something to work from. Those are things I wish I would have seen or this video I wish I would have seen myself wish uh, it would have given me just that much extra, uh, <laughs> a lot less effort to, uh, to learn a few things, right? So all these other stuff I did for fun and um, I'm learning and really enjoying it. Um, I really like the Octoprint. For me, I can remote access this and um, you know I can monitor it from downstairs while I'm kids playing with the kids or whatever. And uh, there you go. So um, let's go through the list quickly. Uh, basically clean up your cables so that it doesn't impede the bed both the back and the front I've seen it happen it's happened to me check your bolts check your eccentric screws because I've had wobble I had tons of issues because things weren't tight from the factory make sure it's snug doesn't have to be over tight uh, verify your extrusion so if you extrude 100 millimeters um, of filament so that means 100 millimeters here has to go through if it's 90 millimeters, which was about what I was extruding for me, it was causing bad print. Um, Raspberry Pi, you can um, you can slice on the Cura and um, 
put the G-code in Octoprint versus slicing an Octoprint. <laughs> Sounds obvious, man, but I tell you, print slow, take it easy. Uh, keep your space clean, use 99% isopropic alcohol, just clean up with a lint-free cloth and uh, you're, you're good there. Level the bed every few times. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, you do it while it's hot and um, you'll get to know your printer and later on you can slow down on not doing that all the time. Uh, there's a few extra uh, prints. Uh, the first prints you should do like this here, the filament cleaner, that, the clip in the back. Uh, stay simple, minimize vari variables, stick to one brand, put your filament in a desiccant box, you won't regret it, and mark your tubing, tighten your nozzle or loosen it while it's hot. That's my list. A guy in the shop is done. If you've got any questions, put it at the bottom. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you very much. And big thank you to the community. Super helpful. The Facebook groups, Teaching Tech. Man, his videos are awesome. Uh, big props to him. So there you go. Thank you guys. Have a good one.